So, Colin, with regard to saving adventure ideas that you're working on and you want to get just right, and maybe you just save them and save them and save them and they almost end up uh, on the back burner or something. That was the impression I got from you. Hello, I'm Colin Green and you are listening to Spike Pit. Something a little bit different today. I've got a really great and thorough comprehensive response from Barney of Loco Ludus where he's commenting and discussing various topics that have come up recently on previous episodes. I've mixed it in with some previous call-ins that you you would have heard if you're a regular listener. They are edited somewhat to give a, a, a context to Barney's points. I wanted to put this episode out with the focus really on Barney's calling. I'd meant to do a similar episode not so long ago and it all fell by the wayside. I feel like really I I'm, I'm want to make amends a little bit for my failed promise as it were. So without any further ado, I'm going to let Barney take the mic and away we go. I've been really enjoying running the same playtest adventure for Alluvial Plains, The Causeway, I've called it. Great title, eh? <laughs> so I've run it with three different groups so far. I just find that that my understanding of, of how the adventure can work just improves and improves every time. My handling of it, and I get more and more into it. So that I think is a great approach. I think you learn about the deep furrows of the proposition of the adventure that you've come up with. For example, despite my best efforts to change it up a little bit and everyone knowing that this adventure is is is, is pretty it's it's pretty open what what the what the player characters can do and where they can go. Every time they go to the same place first. Every time. So that is totally fascinating to me, despite the fact that they talk about maybe doing other things. So very interesting that. So I'm completely challenging the idea that you should run your adventure once. And if maybe you're thinking you want to run it for your regular group, I would then really encourage you to run it for some other groups first. And and as I think you've experienced with with the playtests for Alluvial Plains, it works really well to to do little vignettes you don't have to expect people to to go on the big campaign that that you're working on they could just try something out a little bit of it um i think that works well i can certainly see merit in running the same adventure over a number of times it's not something I'm pretty sure, no, it's in fact something I've never done. In the context that Barney's talking about playtesting a a new game, I can certainly see there's heaps of value to it. But in weekly gaming sessions for myself, I'm struggling to cover the ground I want to cover as a GM as it is without repeating the, the same sort of scenario or adventure there's not really a place for it with what i'm doing at the moment i think if um if i ever get around to writing a bit more and and creating adventures that's where it really comes into its own and i'm a firm believer in in play testing and and running through these things because there's a lot to be learned from seeing how the different players and different groups react to the stuff you're throwing out there. It's another reason why I like to record my sessions and listen back to them, just to really get as much as I can out of the session in terms of kind of 
it, it sounds a bit cheesy, but learning really and, and trying to get better at your your GM craft. Shifting the focus now to replayability and long-term play, something we talk about and many of us in the tabletop RPG hobby enjoy this kind of play, the, the long campaign. I've included this calling from Joe Richter of Hindsight List for some context to Barney's further discussion. When you're talking about how the Black Hat game had, you know, new things added to it, different rules, different ways the game was played. For me, just for me, that system isn't enough to sustain long-term play because when I'm playing, I don't want to have to spend that creative currency on the on the system you know i don't want to have to spend that creative currency on coming up with new rules or mechanisms or mechanics or whatever i want to spend it on coming up with the world and npcs and fun little plot hooks and stuff that's that's what i mean when i say i want to get something from the system i don't want to have to work on the system while i'm playing the game adopting the term replayability instead of longevity is interesting you know there's difference between role play games and board games when we talk about replayability in board games we're of course talking about this kind of cyclicality we go back to the scene again so for example a game like dead of winter which has huge variability in it which makes it really really rich to play you're still uh, a struggling colony of people, survivors fighting off zombies. So the promise of replayability in Dead of Winter, or board games in general perhaps, is that return to the scene, the very specific scene of a particular combination of theme process and mechanisms a big part of replayability in a board game is that you want to you want to dive into that particular amalgam of which mechanisms are very important i want to play a game like this today or like that that one please so in terms of role play games where we might be continuing an adventure we might be in a campaign it's a it's slightly different isn't it because there's a sense of novelty and this comes back a little bit to what you're talking about about saving adventures this content wants to stay fresh somehow or new and we pass through it over it onto some new pastures that's the that's that premise in terms of content the sense of replayability in a role play game is there too you go back into that particular system to playing that particular system and i don't think that contradicts what joe's talking about where he says i don't want to work on the system during play I want to direct my energy towards the adventuring because what Joe is still saying is I like this system. I'm happy with this system. This system does what I want it to do, what I need for the thing I want to do to where I want to throw my, my energies. I'm building on that system. I like this idea of sideways progression. I'm not so drawn to the sort of zero to hero thing. I really enjoyed playing the Black Hack, but I did find that my characters were leveling up too quickly for my tastes and becoming a little too competent. Um, I'm currently playing OSE and I'm like a dozen sessions in and I'm still only halfway through being level two and I'm really enjoying that what I look for in a system is 
this idea of sideways progression. You know, adventuring has its rewards, but it also takes a toll on the character. But this idea of becoming corrupt, becoming warped, mutated even by the act of adventuring. That's what interests me about building a character through the act of play. So rather than doing that through the character creation process, it's all part of the experience of play. Spencer talking about sideways progression, something that interests me. And with a contrasting viewpoint, we've got Barney. He's questioning a little bit whether this is in fact sideways progression. Is it something else? I'd like to pick up on Spencer's comments about lateral progression, if I may, where you be- might become corrupted. To me, that sounds a lot more like negative progression rather than lateral progression. We'd call that regression, right? So character regression. So I guess it'd be quite interesting to have a system that combines progression and regression. I was expecting Spencer to mention Electric Bastion Land or Into the Odd at some point uh, because Electric Bastion Land has this apparently lateral progression. I I wonder if it's kind of random progression. If you get badly hurt, you can end up, if you survive, you can end up with more hit points. So it's, it's kind of unruly progression. It sounds to me that that's what interests Spencer more than anything linear one way or another or lateral one way or another. So in terms of like a game without character progression, as far as I know, that I think I could play for an extended period, um, from what I've seen of it, I think the system that Barney and Spencer and uh, their other buddy Dave are working on, the Vantage system, Alluvial Plains, I think I could play that to me is a game that I think I could play for a long time. And I don't think there's character progression in there. There's a tribal mechanic, so you're dealing a lot with the tribe that would eat up a lot of sessions in a very good way. It's the world, it's the tribal mechanisms, it's it's all that stuff for that system that I've seen that would make me be able to do it. All right, out of time. When Joe said that the only game system that he can think of without character progression that he would could really imagine to get into is the vantage system that I'm developing in the form of alluvial planes with Spencer and David Sermon. It really uh, was a, a wonderful uh, compliment, really amazing that means an incredible amount to me as as we as we develop the system develop the game you know it's a great spur on but i do have to make a bit of a caveat there is there is character progression in there but but it is it's it's very subtle's maybe the wrong word it's slow and small so i hope that doesn't completely torpedo the compliment from joe because i'd like to keep hold of that um but there is there is progression and and i was you know i was a little bit inspired by traveler on that front i think in my view it is nice to start a game with a character that already feels pretty capable and rounded now in in what we have for alluvial planes you you're either a youth an adult or an elder and they progress at different speeds the elder progresses very 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 slowly because they start with nearly everything if you like what is particularly inspiring about joe's comment in terms of design is that I think me and Spencer and 
Dave, do are really trying to create a setting where where yeah where there's where there is somehow things to do th- uh, that would feel like character progression but then would also in some sense be linked with the adventuring and that's what joe's talking about in terms of the tribal mechanism so thank you also colin for your help with that by which i mean that you gave spencer and me and dave some really interesting things to think about in terms of the tribal mechanisms uh which were played in uh, uh, one of Spencer's recent episodes on alluvial planes. And just to finish off here, I think in a roundabout way, there is this, there is this zone between the setting and the system, which, which has, which has qualities of both. And I think that's what Joe is talking about in his, in his message there. Thanks, Colin. Bye. So, I said it was a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. There are some more call-ins that I'm going to come to in a future episode, perhaps in a week's time, all being well. As ever, massive thanks to the people that have contributed. In this episode, we heard from Spencer, Free For All of Keep Off The Borderlands, Joe Richter of Hindsightless and The Wheel or Woe podcast, And last but not least, Barney of Loco Ludus. I want to take a second to thank the patrons, the folk I fondly call the Pit Crew over on the Spike Pit Patreon. We have in fact got a new member over there. You would have heard of him, most likely. Award-winning cartographer, Glyn Seal. He is the mastermind behind Monkey Blood Design and the Middlelands setting. So big thanks for that, Glyn. It couldn't have come at a better time for me. A little pat on the back and vote of encouragement. Last but not least, I want to say a big thanks to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to Old Spike Pit. Take care and I'll catch you later. I'm sorry. (laughs) I kind of ran out of steam there, didn't I? Anyway, I don't know if that makes any more sense. Peace out.